to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia's for Lowriders. We're doing the thing. The Mazda B series body drop bagged. Custom suspension, exhaust, interior, paint, bodywork. You name it, we're doing it. That's the thing. It's been the thing for well over 50 videos now. Even though last week's video was named the 50th, but regardless, there's a lot of videos. So if you've never been here before, I would really appreciate it. If you just hit the subscribe button and do all the normal YouTube things, the comments and the likes and whatnot, go back and rewatch or watch if you haven't seen them. All of the old videos, there's a ton of them, ton of me rambling and uh, complaining about ADD and all of the things that I do, but we're getting it done. There's okay ish information mixed in with all of those things that I ramble about today and this week, it has been extremely hot yesterday. It was. 99 today i think it's supposed to be 99 it's already hot and it is 6 30 in the morning so we're gonna get out here if you haven't been with us for the last couple of videos i had a lot of issues with the clutch that was a very large problem and because of those issues i couldn't get the truck to move and because of the not being able to get the truck to move i couldn't do the body work because I wanted to take the truck out of the garage and do the body work on all of the panels that you don't see here. With those issues that we were having and not being able to move out of here because of my garage is tiny and I need the space to do the work, I wasn't able to get the body work done. So it put me behind about two weeks. In those two weeks, I was hoping before the heat really kicked in to get the things done, but the heat has kicked in. I don't really have the space to do body work outside of the garage. I'd rather not do it outside of the garage because it's 100 degrees. And I'd rather not do it in the garage with the AC running the entire time because my mini split, it's pretty new. It's been up there for about, a, a, I don't know, eight months. And I'd rather not ruin it. So we're gonna do other things and keep this ball rolling and doing something and accomplishing it to get it on the road. There's a pretty good chance the body panels might go back on it until it gets a little bit cooler because the the foreseeable forecast is around 100 degrees and like I said I don't want to ruin that thing so I think what we're going to do today to get to the point and so I try to not ramble and avoid some of the heat today I want to work on the bed again bed needs a good amount of work to be technically finished up to where the body work can start I started the bed like a year ago, and it's been sitting outside ever since. I need to make stilts for the bed. I need to make a roll pan for the bed. The truck will have a type of a bumper on it, but I need to make a roll pan to fill in the sheet metal that I removed because it was rusty. I need to make a filler panel for the rear. There's a lot of things that need to be done to the bed. The bed has never been on the truck. The bed came from a parts truck, so I have no idea if it's going to actually fit. So we're going to figure that out today and see if we're in trouble or not. So the bed is raised five and a half inches. The truck is body dropped two and a half inches. There's a C notch involved. There is a possibility that the bed won't fit and I'll still have to cut the center out. If you go way back over a year ago, I wasn't sure if I was going to body drop the truck. I was still kind of a... Uh, I was still kind of in limbo about my decision. And then I body dropped the truck, so we're gonna have to fight and work around and hopefully really, really hope we don't have to cut the bed, because that would suck. Because I really was trying to keep a factory appearing bed floor. But we're gonna go out here. I got a couple things that I need. Whew, man, that heat is already out. It is already like 80 degrees, I think. I need to move my truck. This is probably like the flattest part outside of my garage. I need to move my ranchero out of the way. And I would like to drag my gantry to the front yard. This whole video revolves around if the skid steer is gonna fire up today. And this is the floor that we have already raised. As you can see, the wheel tubs are flush with the top of the fenders. Section that back wall, so we got tons of room in there. As you can see here, I cut that roll pan off because it was a rusty piece of junk. And I need to fill that gap in also and come up with something cool. 
to access all of the air ride stuff. So we got some moving around to do. Thanks to my buddy Tim for leaving this thing at my house for the last two years. It has come in handy a few times. Apparently, I'm gonna owe him a new one when the time comes because it used to be red and I don't think this thing's gonna work. He used to be red and one of the knobs is broken off of it. I didn't realize it wasn't inside the truck that it was sitting on top of. And it's been in the rain the whole time, in the elements. So, Tim, whenever it comes time, you let me know. I'll get you another one. Oh, yeah. It might just actually work. come up with a way to make this thing not rotate while I'm driving underneath of it. It was completely stagnant yesterday. There was no air flowing. It was just hot, hot, hot. Come out here today. 
Wind's blowing like crazy. And I guarantee, as soon as I'm done doing this stuff, there will be no wind and it'll be extremely hot. So maybe I can just prevent this thing from twisting a little bit. might seem really high but you have to get it at least the 18 inches off the ground or 20 inches off the ground for the size of the tire so we'll see if we can get the truck fired up and hopefully drive it right underneath of it I think I need to cover the back of the cab with some like cardboard or something so I don't ruin the paint that I put on there it's probably a really bad idea to do all of that before the fabrication was done but but you know, it doesn't have to make sense, as long as the end result is the same, I guess. So I did come out here this week, and I did work on the truck. I got the switch box wired up, and then I stared at it. I stared at it for probably like, probably like a good two or three hours this week. Solid staring, just going over everything that I need to purchase in order to get this thing done. Because there's a lot of little things that I keep running into tiny roadblocks with that I can't go any further because I need small things. So I have my old list that I made, I don't know what it was, months ago, and I took off a, a complete, I took off a complete page of things that needed to be done. And then proceeded to sit here and write down another complete page of things that need to be done. Just small stuff that add up to a lot of large things. For instance, I got the switch box wired up and the switch box does function the rear. I can put shop air in the tank, raise the truck up and down and do its thing. But again, back to the lack of parts, I ordered some switches to where I can put the compressors on a switch and they're not just turning on with the key because it's carbureted and it's got a little tiny battery. And if you have to crank for a few more seconds while the compressors are running, it's like a race against time to see who gets the power, either the starter or the air compressors. So that's for one thing that I can't finish the compressor wiring. So I can't pump the truck up on its own air until the switches show up, which are supposed to show up. And again, Amazon, they just, I don't know. I don't know if they got something against me or something, but they keep doing this. So the switches aren't supposed to be here for more and more days. I got part, some switches that I ordered, but not all of the switches. I ordered some other one, I don't know. Another thing, the fan, I ordered a inline piece to go on the radiator. The inline piece is the temperature switch. I'm hoping that I can attach it to one of the smaller tubes coming off the bottom of the intake rather than tapping into the intake or tapping into the radiator or tapping into a coolant line like one of the main ones and that's not supposed to be here for like two weeks so I can't finish that for two weeks. I wish they would tell you these things instead of giving you an imaginary date in the beginning. So far the only switches that have shown up are the ones that I'm going to use for the horn. That steering column's jacked up. There's no way for me to make the horn work. I don't think that I need to invest the time in that steering column just to make a horn work. So we're going to put it on a little tiny button and a relay. To finish plumbing the front, if you remember back when we put the bulkheads in to go from the air management in the cab to the back cab wall, one of my only choices was to put that one bulkhead really, really close to the fuel tank. I ordered those 90s from Switch and I didn't order them soon enough. They're supposed to be here tomorrow or Tuesday. So we're not gonna get that done this weekend. That would be nice because then at that point we can just air the truck up and down with the switch box. So there's a lot of little things like that that are preventing it from basically just starting up, airing up and driving around on its own without overheating. Without those things showing up, I can't finish any of those. I was hoping to talk about me Hoping to turn the camera on and be like, hey guys, guess what I got done this week? But, you know, it happens. It's happened a lot. But regardless, that's this week. 
It's been in the 90s the whole week and terrible, and it has removed all of my energy from me during the day. By the time I get home from work, I am drained, drained, drained. So we're going to stop rambling. We're going to back this outside because it's already probably like 90 degrees now. This is my, I don't want to kill my battery potentially because I forgot something on while it's sitting in the garage with everything in pieces method of getting the truck to start up. Get that hooked up. Hook this up so we can use the switch box. It's all temporary, I promise. I have one of these, I don't know where it's at, that has a shutoff valve in the middle, but until I find it, we gotta do this really weird thing, we gotta be really quick about it. Fill it up with much as, as much air as we can. And disconnect them both at the same time. I am not looking forward to this. Whew, that sun. Jeez. So this is the first time it's had the switch box actually working in a very, very long time. So, oh, this is my ghetto way of working around it, not having a, oh, that's a terrible noise, not having the power hooked up just yet. I send 12 volts, the switch box comes on, we can actually air up the rear, finally. Come on, truck. I still don't have the truck hooked up, so. She runs a little rough when it's cold. The more I think about it. Come on. The more I think about it. I kind of just want to put the sheet metal on it and drive it, like, I'm not saying like forever, but I don't know. Kinda would be nice to enjoy it before it's winter time. And it's, it is all sort of one color. It doesn't look terrible. Maybe it's one of those things whenever I get a free weekend, like I'll pull the bed off and paint the bed or pull the front fenders off or doors off or whatever. I forgot to put the cardboard on that I was talking about. I think we should uh, we should probably do that before I get ahead of myself. We got some pretty relieving news. It's actually pretty awesome. I did not expect it at all. With the support that needs to be removed in the center of the bed, the body line almost lines up perfectly. So what I need to do, I shortened this guy like 
the five and a half inches or whatever that the body drop is in the in the bed but there's still an overhang on the bottom side that's made into this so i need to trim that for my drive shaft loop and i need to cut that support off in the center so i need to try to cut that support off without ruining the bed floor which it can be fixed regardless but i am extremely surprised with how well i mean it's obviously just kind of sitting there but with how close that body line is that means once that's gone actually, it's teeter-tottering once that's gone i'll have plenty of room which is awesome so i need to raise the bed back up move the truck out of the way drag tools out here and take that cross brace off I wonder how many times I'm going to have to do this today. You see that loop right there? I actually scratched the crap out of it, so I'll have to touch that up later. And then this support needs to be removed because it's just resting on the notch, which I knew it was going to, but I wanted to see how close we were going to be. I don't want to waste the time drilling out all those spot welds and cleaning it up and making it look good if i was just gonna have to cut the whole thing out anyway i know you're probably saying well you could have just took a tape measure to it and figured it out i tried to take a tape measure to it with the bed laying on gravel it wasn't the best measurement because these things i don't have all the supports made I only made two of them apparently the bed gets all wonky when it's resting on its own weight and the bedsides move and the gravel is not a good, yeah, it was, I don't know. It's hot, it's already hot. Once you start hearing them cicadas or whatever, you know it's going, you're in for a bad day, a hot day. It is so convenient with this thing driving now. With it not driving before, it made all of this so much harder. It's hard to tell, can't really see them, but there are spot welds. Every single one of these ridges has a spot weld on it. So I gotta cut off 60 spot welds or whatever it is. And that drive shaft loop hoop thing, it's probably somewhere, I'm gonna measure it out, but it's probably somewhere around here in between these two bolts. Oh, I need to move some vehicles, I think, so I don't ruin any paint jobs and glass. And drag my air file out here, or my air sander thing. At least we're in the shade of the bed, I guess. So, like a year ago, when I made the first video on this, I made these bed supports from scratch bent them up, flattened them, angled them, all that. I still need to make these guys because this is what I was getting at earlier. The bed's a little, a little bit floppy. It's not bad. It only flexes to like a tiny amount. Well, yeah, I need to make that one and apparently that one. I don't know if I was just feeling lazy or the, like I said, the ADD kicked in, but I don't. I don't remember not making them. I'm terrible sometimes. At ADD, man, I tell you, it just it removes all of what you thought you were gonna do quickly.
Well, it is now 1120. So I don't know how many hours I've been out there. That cross brace came off pretty smooth except for the ends. They were so rusted on there that I ended up basically grinding them completely flat to get them off. But the truck has a bed on it. It is on the ground, finally. Of course, it's not bolted on. It's just sitting there. Actually, the bed is sitting on the ground now because the ground is supporting the bed. The body line is slightly lowered than the truck line, I guess. But it looks pretty awesome. The truck forward tucked really, really bad before. This stuff is, of course, holding the bed from going forward. The bed needs to move forward probably another inch. So the forward tuck should be completely gone once the bed is shifted that way. It's kind of hard to do with it teetering on the C-notches, which my microfibers fell off the C-notches and they're scratched all the crap now, but I can fix that later. So yeah, once that gap is gone, this will look pretty good. Can't see anything in there. Oh, now we need to make some stilts, but as you can see, I am exhausted and hot. I'm going to take lunch and hopefully the couch doesn't swallow me up for the rest of the day. At least a couple hours for sure it's going to happen, but pretty good progress. Bed's on the truck, so that's, that's movement forward. Now we just got to go inside and brainstorm for a couple hours and hopefully I can come up with something cool for bed supports. I'm thinking the more simple, the better. I'm thinking like just straight up stilts, something that's hopefully not, doesn't teeter totter. So yeah, be, uh, we'll be right back. Well, I edited everything that I had so far and it was a little bit more than I thought. Got a Amazon package in the mail today and it's completely missing a corner and there's nothing inside of it. This was supposed to be parts for this. It's pretty awesome. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna work because it came from the same seller, but yesterday I ordered the same thing that told me it was going to be delayed until the 27th. So it's a second order of the exact same thing. And they came in today. This is the switches that I need. So what I think we're gonna do because I was really hoping to make the mounts, which I can start making the mounts for this today, but it's already kind of late. Because, of course, the, the couch got me after I edited. Them old people naps, they just sneak up on you, I tell you. But, I can start making the mounts, but I can't finish the mounts because I need new hardware. I forgot, or didn't realize, or whatever, the hardware that came between the two beds. This, this truck had some random stuff jammed in there that wasn't right the other truck had bolts but they're really rough looking like they're rusted and nasty and i'd rather not put them back in the bed if i can help it so we're kind of at a standstill as it when it comes to the bed so i need to figure out exactly what thread pitch and all that stuff that that those are so i can order bolts to bolt the bed to the truck once i make the mounts for the bed to bolt to the truck so I think we're going to, I'll show you what my idea for the wiring is and the switches. So this is a plug, it goes in the dashboard right here. There's three of them. They're meant for switches. There's probably a specific actual Mazda switch because this, this looks like something would actually click into it if the other side was knocked out. But I was trying to come up with something that was kind of not obvious and in your face like this is aftermarket and this doesn't belong 
What I came up with is these switches here. They look identical. I'm not sure why one has way more wire than the other, which really doesn't matter because all we're doing is using these as a signal to turn on a relay. So it's not really a load going to be on these. I think it'll look pretty clean. You won't see the stainless nut part of it. It'll just be the black ring. I'm thinking these little guys right in the center of these. So there's room for three switches. That gives me room for a horn, the fan, and the air compressors, or however I want to arrange them. What I did is I found some switches that look identical, but they're made differently. This is an on and off switch. You can see, if you can actually hear that, it actually clicks into it. This is a momentary. So this would be to turn on and off the air compressors and the fan setup. This would be for the horn, because you do not want the horn to stay on. It's just a momentary. It has a spring in it. There's no lock. So I'm going to drill these real quick and we'll see what it looks like. Hopefully the center of this thing isn't in line with one of the clips. It should be all right. Look too bad. I don't think that stands out as not stock. Kind of blends in. Very subtle little guys. now sometime this week I need to wire all those in I do want to replace this with a probably a USB thing I actually have the USB cable so I actually have one of these that has a power wire on the end rather than the USB on both sides but I'll be replacing that with the USB and it has a little cover, so again, it looks stock, and I can charge my phone or whatever I need to do. I actually forgot to show, after removing the cross brace, I had one pull out, or one tear out, or whatever you want to call it. Other than that, oh wait, there was two. Other than that, it looks pretty good. So, Next week's video, because I'm kind of at a standstill right now because of I don't have bolts and I don't really, I need to dig sheet metal out of my sea container. And there's a lot of other little things that I need to accumulate in order to do all of this. I'm going to try and tackle that wiring this week. Next week's video, we're going to make stilts for sure. We might make a roll pan from scratch because... I don't want to buy a roll pan because they're like $200 and even if I bought one I'm pretty sure I cut out more than what those roll pans would cover. I installed one for my buddy Brent like I don't know six years ago and his one of his Mazdas this used to be one of his Mazdas and I don't think it went to the edge as far as I would need like to this portion here so I need to make a filler panel stilts my buddy Sean gave me that filler neck a really long time ago. 
So I need to make that work. There's a lot of little stuff. And then there's, of course, the entire list of things that I still have to accomplish. I think that's going to do it for this week. The heat really ruined my abilities of not being lazy, pretty much. It, it forced me to be lazy. That's what I'm blaming it on, at least. So if we have to blame anybody this weekend, we're going to blame 99 degrees yesterday. But again, if y'all have never been here before, don't forget to subscribe. Do all the normal YouTube -y things. Go back and check out all of the other videos. And we will see you next Sunday because we upload every single Sunday. Thanks for watching.